we're going to change gears a little bit and talk about crystal resonators. And so the reason this is a little bit different than what we've talked about so far is instead of talking about circuitry to control our oscillation frequency, we're going to be talking about physical materials and their properties and dimensions. And so in this video, we're just going to look at sort of the basic principles of our crystal resonators. And then in a later video, we'll look at our circuit diagram and some of the sort of standard, some standard values for some of the components. So our idea for our crystal resonators is based on the piezoelectric effect. So we're talking about dealing with piezoelectric materials. And so with piezoelectric materials, essentially if we have some applied voltage, what we're going to get is a change in material shape. So change in material shape. So let's say applied voltage. Um, but this also works the other way as well. So if we stress the material, we have some mechanical stress that's causing the material shape to change, then we can also have some voltage different measured across the material. So we can kind of go back and forth between voltage and deflection or bending or stretching or some change in the material. And so what we are basically going to do with our resonator then is we drive this resonator with a, an applied voltage so drive resonator with applied voltage. And what we see then is that it will resonate or oscillate at a fixed frequency. So this applied voltage causes it to resonate or to oscillate. at a fixed frequency. And so what exactly is this frequency? How do we determine what this is? Well, this fixed frequency is going to be determined by the dimensions and the properties of the material. So determined by crystal dimensions. And so we're not going to get into that, into the details of this. We're just kind of mentioning this just so you're aware of it. Um, in general, we're gonna be focusing more on the circuit based oscillators. But some typical values of these frequencies can be from tens of kHz to megahertz. So pretty good range uh, for most electronic applications. Another thing to note about these crystal resonators is that they have a very high quality factor. So our effective quality factor So we have actually seen this before, our effective quality factor Q. Uh, we saw this in ENG301 when we were talking about series and parallel resonance. Um, but this value of our effective resonator, uh, our effective quality factor for our crystal resonator can actually be several thousand or higher. So we'll just put several thousand plus. And so if you recall from back in ENG301, when we were talking about our series in parallel resonance, we said that a quality factor of Q greater than 10 was a high quality circuit. And so here we're talking about Q several thousand or higher. So these are very high quality circuits in terms of selectivity, in terms of having just one specific frequency. So typical materials for this are silicon dioxide. So typically, silicon dioxide, so of course that can change. And so this silicon dioxide is crystalline quartz. So of course we're talking about crystal oscillators, so this is going to be a crystalline material. And again, other materials can be used, but this is just a common one. And so lastly in this video, let's take a look at a common structure. Uh, so one common structure is to have a thin slab of that crystalline quartz between two conductors. And so I have two views here. On the left, we have an aerial view, and on the right, we have a side view. And so on the side view, I've noted that the layers are not to scale. But from our aerial view, what we can see is we essentially have this conductor here, which is on top, drawn in black. And then we have a similar sort of paddle shape on the bottom, which I've drawn in gray. And then there's a circle area that overlaps with our circle area of that top conductor. And then all of this material here is just our our silicon dioxide or crystalline quartz disc. 
So sort of putting this together with our side view then, we see here's our bottom conductor, here's our top conductor or our top electrode, and then we have our crystalline disk in between the two. So we do see that there is some small amount of overlap between these two electrodes across the disk. And so that allows us to see that uh, resonation or, or oscillation in our crystalline quartz as we apply a bias across that. And so these two sort of areas over here uh, are also, they're part of our electrode, but they're also providing mechanical stability and connection to some uh, IC or some type of thing where this is packaged. So maybe this is connected with some type of vibration isolation to, to the packaging. So that's sort of the basic idea and structure of some common resonators. So in the next video, what we're gonna look at is the circuit diagram, some of the key components and key values that can lead us to having that really large quality factor.